So, continuing where I left off, uh, this morning was filled with unexpected events. Uh, this morning, my mom went to go eat with my dad, and then the car was towed. So, we had to call around trying to figure out where the car went. We found out which yard it went to, so we went to retrieve the car, and they said that the car was towed because it didn't have a handicap sign or a placard. But it does. Just my dad put it where it's freaking tinted. So they couldn't see it. They towed it. Whoop the $305 down the drain. Um, we had the number to call it and fight it. But uh, they took a picture of the car. Obviously, it didn't show it up front. That's why it was towed. But today, we are back super late in the evening again. What I'm going to be doing is instead of just stripping this down and paint it for the last video for the engine closing closing that video out i'm just going to make a full video on how to wrinkle um your valve cover and um for this video i wanted to give a quick shout out now i know there's a lot of other how to wrinkle black your valve cover videos online but i wanted to give a shout out to uh right hand drive luciero i'm not sure if i pronounced it correctly but uh She's a female enthusiast. She has a right-hand drive Integra, K-swapped, still under the knife, and it's going to arise soon. She's also a fellow YouTuber, and I saw her video on how to wrinkle black your valve cover, and uh, she has super great results. But this is not my first run with doing this wrinkle um, paint job, but um, I remember she had made one, so... I wanted to give a local a shout out because uh, she's also a friend of all of my friends at the shop that I fuck with. Red Zone. So if you guys like Integris or you guys like right hand drive or if you guys like case swaps or maybe you're a person who likes right hand drive Integra case swapped, give her a follow. I'll put all her information in the description below. Now let's get to stripping this valve cover. So pretty much for this job, you're gonna have your item, put it away from your car. So that way the aircraft uh, paint stripper is not gonna fly onto your car and then strip the paint off of your car too. So uh, mine is gonna be pretty much right here. There's no heavy wind out, so I'm not worried about, you know, overspray spraying that direction. But have your item placed on, you know nicely elevated because you know my fat ass i probably hurt my back trying to space shit on the floor so i got it on my trash can with a piece of flat wood on top so it's easier for me to just kind of spray at my height got me some aircraft paint remover and back then there used to be only aircraft paint remover now there's aircraft adhesive remover aircraft base coat clear coat remover which is the same as paint remover because it's paint but grab me one of these from O'Reilly's and you're going to need your wrinkle black right here. That's an empty can. I actually have a new one. And then you're going to have your high temp primer, right? Because you want to prime anything that you paint because you want it to stick so it can last longer. A lot of people skip the step of primer and they wonder why paint peels off. Let me show you a prime example of no primer and paint peeling off. Right here. This car was repainted Rutland Red. And okay, well, that may not be primer. That that right there is sealer. Sealer is when you don't use primer and sealer is to make the whole you know panel one color so that way it's not a different shade of red primer goes on like area that um you're repairing or anyways i just use primer because you can see the sealer didn't do its job it didn't stick and you can see the original red underneath all the did was scuffed it sealed it painted it if that makes any sense but wrinkle plus engine enamel primer aircraft remover Just getting it all nice and warm since it's hella cold. Well, 
well night fell really quickly so I don't have my heat gun nor do I have access to an oven or I don't want to use the oven inside the house got this makeshift little booth and I got the valve cover inside of it as of right now what I'm doing is I'm just preheating it the stripping took some time um, there's still some areas between the spark plug area that is not fully stripped but I'm not worried about it I'm just preheating the valve cover right now just to kind of get it all nice and warm so you know it doesn't take too long to start the initial um, you know wrinkle wrinkle of the paint but I'm gonna start spraying it right now it's about six o'clock and uh, it's not too cold but this little box with the tin foil inside of it should act as an oven because that thing gets really hot Ooh, that that is definitely hot for sure I already got that all shooken up for like five minutes I'm gonna have it sit in front of the, the heater Oh yeah. Oh, that is hot. All right, so I'm gonna get this all preheated up again while I spray my uh, first coat. Okay. So I'm gonna hit it with primer. Probably gonna do about two coats, unless I just go ham and uh, do a heavy first, because it's gonna dry fairly quickly in there. So I was sitting here looking at it like something is missing. I forgot to tape up all the areas that uh, were supposed to stay silver. So I went ahead and taped all of that up. Now this is like semi cold again, but whatever. Now I'm gonna prime it. So it looks like I just bombed the primer on there. One heavy ass coat. Just because it is cold. And it's dark. So now I'm going to put that in there. Apply three heavy coats. In cross hatch pattern. In other words. Crisscross. So first coat be like horizontal. And we're doing about... 15 minutes in between it's supposed to air dry for two hours according to the back here but I'm using that to speed up the process and if there is any uneven wrinkle you can always apply more again let it dry or you know speed up the process to get that area to wrinkle up and match the rest of the valve cover but YOLO heavy coats here we go So I'm gonna repeat that process every 15 minutes, give or take, and then, you know, we'll we'll uh, see how it looks like at the end of the second coat before my third, and then I'll update you guys when I pull it back out.
<laughs> this booth works perfect. Just applied the third coat heavily. Um, I had this whole section right here all wrinkled out, except right here was like wrinkled, but it wasn't like a deep wrinkle like these guys. But uh, I'm gonna let this air dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll throw it in there again. Let it bake for an hour plus. Um, but it's looking really good so um tomorrow i'm crossing fingers hopefully this wrinkles in all the area or at least the most visible part of the valve cover and i'll be happy i have not seen this yet let's see oh it's looking good All right, well, you'll look at that. Wow. It's not a heavy wrinkle. It's near stock. Well, that turned out really well. That turned out great. Now on the back of the can, it says if you want it to wrinkle more, you can toss it in the oven to get the wrinkle to react and get a thicker, wrinkle i guess but this is perfect i don't want it to be too wrinkled um i'm pretty happy on how this turned out and um i'm gonna get that on the motor when everything's all said and done it's kind of like a final touch like icing on the cake so now i'm gonna cap out this video just because that is done and today i'm also going to be swapping the car so um i'm going to continue this whole swapping thing tomorrow so if you guys find this very helpful give it a thumbs up like this video subscribe if you guys want to see some progress on that car um i will be uploading up until friday this week and then i'm going to be headed out of town and the car should be ready to mob this weekend as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video.